My pleasure. The memo was a big topic of conversation at the Republican Party's annual retreat in West Virginia. Speaking to the press, House Speaker Paul Ryan defended it. What this memo is, is Congress doing its job in conducting legitimate oversight over a very unique law, FISA. And if mistakes were made and if individuals did something wrong, then it is our job as the legislative branch of government to conduct oversight over the executive branch if abuses were made. Remember, FISA is a unique situation which involves Americans' civil liberties. And if American civil liberties were, were abused, then that needs to come to light so that that doesn't happen again. What this is not is an indictment on our institutions of our justice system. This memo is not an indictment of the FBI, of the Department of Justice. Uh, it does not impugn uh, the Mueller investigation or the Deputy Attorney General. CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes is in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. So Nancy, what are Republican lawmakers saying about the pending release of this memo? And has it overshadowed other agenda items? Well, it's definitely overshadowed their talking points here at the retreat because every time they come here to the filing center where all the reporters are uh, sort of penned in together, that's what they get asked about. So they want to talk about the economy. They want to talk about people uh, seeing more take-home pay because of the tax cuts, and they get pelted with questions about the memo. They assure us, however, uh, that at the resort across the street where they uh, have all been meeting for a day and a half now, uh, that they are not not fixated on the memo, that they are talking about their agenda for 2018, their uh, talking strategy, they're breaking off into small groups to discuss various issues like military funding, uh, like immigration, uh, and that, they, that this is just a political game that's being trumped up and it's not what they came here to talk about. Well, as you know, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, is calling for the chairman of the committee, Devin Nunes, to step aside. Democratic leadership Right. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are as well. House Speaker Paul Ryan says it's just a political distraction. Why don't Democrats right. want the memo released? Uh, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, they believe that this memo essentially cherry picks uh, classified information and kind of smushes it all together to paint a picture uh, of an FBI that unfairly went after uh, Trump campaign aides or uh, campaign associates in uh, the final days of the campaign and the early days of the Trump transition and the Trump presidency. And they say that it, all that information uh, needs to be looked at as a whole. So number one, uh, they say that the memo itself is misleading. Number two, uh, they're very frustrated that it looks like this memo is going to be released before the Democratic memo, about 10 pages, that has been written up to rebut everything that is in the Republican memo. Uh, that Democratic memo was just written up this past week. It needs to be vetted. Uh, they have to make sure that uh, sources and methods aren't revealed before that memo can be released. So it could come out a week or more after the Republican memo, and they feel that that is time that they'll lose in the court of public opinion because the GOP memo will be out there and they won't be able to counter it as effectively because a lot of the information in their memo, until the point that uh, the committee signs off on it being released, is still classified. So that ties their hands a bit. And then beyond that, uh, they say, hey, listen to the uh, director of the FBI himself. He says that this memo is misleading and shouldn't be released and they are urging their Republican colleagues to hold off because they say uh, it undermines the, uh, the validity of the work that Robert Mueller is doing. They say that's exactly the goal for Republicans. And more broadly, they believe it is going to undermine the reputation of uh, the nation's premier law enforcement agency and is going to hurt morale at the FBI for reasons that they don't believe, Democrats at least, don't believe are valid. Well, during remarks Thursday, President Trump did not mention the memo or Russia, but he did talk about DACA, saying that any immigration plan would need to be, quote, fair and equitable and good and secure. Where do lawmakers stand on coming up with a deal by next week? 
They are all over the place. One thing that's been striking here in West Virginia, Elaine, is how much um, distance there still is just between Republicans on this immigration issue. For example, uh, very early this morning, uh, Senator John Thune came out, did a press conference here at the podium behind me, and uh, talked about the fact that he thinks it's most realistic to do a really narrow deal, something that just addresses the legal status of those so-called dreamers and puts in some border security to sort of even things out. Uh, he says, look, that's the only realist thing that's going to realistically get through the House and the Senate. We should go in that direction, call it a day, even though it doesn't include everything that Republicans want when it comes to immigration reform. Then a few hours later, uh, James Lankford comes out and he says, oh, no, I don't want to do a skinny version of immigration. We've got real immigration problems. If we are going to provide legal status for these so-called dreamers, uh, we need to do a whole bunch of things to make sure that this problem isn't exacerbated. And there are a lot of Republicans who agree with him. Then, beyond that, uh, I talked to uh, Bob Goodlatte of Virginia. He is the chair of the Judiciary Committee. He and a few other House Republicans came out with their own plan that they are still pushing uh, that is to the right of the president's proposal. And I asked him, you know, are, are you still pushing your own plan? Are you getting behind the president? There are all these v negotiations going on. He said, no, no, we are still pushing for our plan to be the base bill for whatever comes out of the House. And so, you know, forget Democrats versus Republicans and, and the intractable divisions between the two parties. Just look at the GOP and how much trouble they're going to have finding consensus. We had um, one Republican leader say to us point blank, no, we're not going to come out of this retreat uh, united. It's just not realistic to think that we will be united on this issue. There are just too many varying points of view. Wow, very telling. Well, we are also approaching the deadline to pass a government spending bill. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell right. said he doesn't think we'll see a government shutdown again. Is he being overly optimistic? Well, we're starting to get signals from House Republicans that they may be able to reach some kind of spending agreement that would stave off a government shutdown. We're in a bit of a different situation, Elaine, this time around than we were a week and a half ago when Democrats were clearly holding out on government spending because they wanted to get some pre uh, some promises from the Republican leader over DACA recipients. This time around, you've got a lot of frustrated House conservatives, defense hawks, and the like, who say, you know, this is the fifth time that we're going to be funding the government just for a few weeks because we cannot come up with a long-term deal on spending. Spending for the military versus domestic spending, uh, and they are very frustrated about that. They say it doesn't allow the military to plan long-term. It doesn't real, really allow any agency in the government to, uh, to plan long-term. And so in this situation, you may have House Republicans who balk at government spending, and, and you won't necessarily have Democrats who are willing to sort of step in and close the gap because they're still frustrated that there's no DACA deal. And so uh, that's sort of the, the landscape for next week's funding fight. Funding runs out again on February 8th. But uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Republican leaders think that they're getting closer to working out those, uh, those issues with House conservatives, and if they can do that, then uh, they don't think that there will be a government shut down because they know that Senate Democrats um, are going to be very reluctant to prompt another shutdown or vote no against government funding because the Republican leader Mitch McConnell has told them if you do that my DACA promise is off. All right Nancy Cordes for us. Nancy thanks very much.